Hello there and welcome back to the Master Moldy channel. Now before I start getting into the topic of the video, I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for 2,000 subscribers. Actually, it's a bit more like 2,010 subscribers by the time I'm filming this video, but it genuinely does feel like yesterday that we hit 1,000. It was not even two months ago, and we are very, very quickly now approaching that 10K mark. I forget what I said I was going to do at 10K. I'm still planning on building a mini figure scale. As close to 145 as I can get, start destroyer at 100K subs. So we're 2% of the way there. I better start planning that and finding where I'm going to find the space to construct such a large model. Remember, we are going for the Guinness World Records as long as no one's beat it by the time we hit it. But today, we're going to be taking a look at the 25th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars. It's practically July. In fact, by the time the video goes out, it's only two days until July. So let's take a look at the last six months, what LEGO have done. We've got a very good idea uh, what the next six months holds because LEGO.com have just posted teasers for the rest of the 25th anniversary minifigures. Of course, they've already been rumored, people have been speculating based on the different logos, based on the minifigures we saw in the 25 Years of Star Wars trailer. And the first one, Game Face On, that's Cal Kestis, who's coming out in the Star Destroyer in August. So Lego have technically already released that one. Then we've got all the wrong guesses, as in all the wrong guesses. I don't know if they're trying to throw us off a young layer here. I think it's got to be young layer. That's who we saw in the trailer. Doesn't make sense for another Kenobi set to come out. So perhaps because of some Star Wars rules, they couldn't have done young layer at the time of all the other Kenobi sets. I mean, we got Kenobi, we got Vader, we got Ned B, but besides that, we also got the Inquisitor Scythe, which I do want to pick up one day. That looks like a really, really cool set. But I think that's going to be the young layer. Number nine, it's time. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what that is meant to be a reference to, but I'm going to assume that is nine none. I don't know if there's another reference that that could be for number nine. It's got to be nine. And then we have oh so cute. And I'm a bit thrown by this one. I don't know if this is R2KT as in like wordplay as in QT or something like that. So I'm just editing this video and I've realized throughout the whole thing, I refer to QTKT as in oh so cute QT. And that is why it's referencing the droid as R2KT. No idea why I did that. The plot hole deepens because this droid who Lego have credited from their buildable droids as this is double, no triple me because you've got me pointing at me, pointing at me. But this droid that they credit as QTKT in the new buildable droid isn't actually who you think. And I'll be doing a longer video about this when I have a bit more time. I am preparing to go out tomorrow, so there'll be a little delay. But QT was actually a droid that belonged to Ayla Secura and was a stand-in for R2KT during the Delta Squad arc, the droids that then ended up finding Gregor. It's a great arc, but because there was already one R2, they decided to create a whole new droid. And this is the version that LEGO have gone with. I would have so preferred an R2KT droid because it's got such a strong connection to the Star Wars community. And I think Lego have just picked the wrong one. I'm not quite sure if you can tell it in the design. Again, I will go over this in greater detail in another video, but I just wanted to let you know the droid we all thought was the droid isn't actually the droid Lego are giving us. It's a bit confusing. Again, I will be breaking this down, but this is the droid that Lego are giving us instead. And it's just a regular droid belonging to Ayla Secura. Now that's not to take away from Lego's thoughts here. It's still a pink droid and I'm sure it will probably end up looking like one of them anyway. But let's get back and enjoy the video. 
or it's because of the story behind the droid, which if you don't know, definitely give it a Google. I won't go into it in this video, but it is a really, really nice story. So we do have potentially them four figures. I think that is it. We've got them on top of Malak, Fives, Saw, and then we've got the bonus Darth Maul in the new Visual Dictionary, the updated Star Wars Visual Dictionary. I think it's like the third or fourth one by this point. And actually on top of this, They've uploaded instructions for a microphone and glasses for Stitch. I think that is really awesome. Not related to Star Wars, but I had to bring it up for any Disney fans out there. Now, as of right this moment, I still haven't seen any of the visual dictionaries about, and Amazon don't exactly have it on a massive sale yet. I'm waiting for something like half price so I can grab it for only a tenner. But I do have the fives right next to me this mini figure here and i've actually given him a hair piece which is i think a problem for these mini figures i'm not sure we get any other helmeted mini figures so maluk doesn't come with a hair piece it doesn't make sense for him saw guerrera does but he doesn't get the helmet cow's gonna come with hair leia's gonna come with hair nine numbs got the nice molded head we saw in the trailer and then Katie's a droid, so it'd be very funny if they put a hairpiece with them. It's been quite a good year so far. There's been a load of different sets. We've obviously seen the MIDI scale, which are credited with being 25 years. So I don't think we will be seeing them continue into next year, unless LEGO decide to continue them because they've done two specials now, the Nebulon 3 Frigate and I think there was another one. Now, I might be mistaken, but I think there was another MIDI scow. I don't remember what it was, though. But then we got the... Oh, no, the Executor Star Destroyer, the Super Star Destroyer we got last year. That was a regular set. And then we got the Falcon, the Tantive, and the Invisible Hand. Under the 25 years of Star Wars, they come with a nice plaque that is similar to a piece that I've got laying around, which has this 25 years of Lego Star Wars print on it, which is quite nice, actually. It's got some nice detail on the R2 to make it look like a hologram. And I've actually got it clipped to my bongo display, which I would like to be starting another big mock soon, so stay tuned for that. But based on the news we've got so far, I don't think we're really expecting any massive Star Wars sets to come out for 25 years. They might credit the UCS set with a 25 years plaque or something like that. But I think we pretty much know everything we're getting. So I've talked long enough about it. I will be comparing fives with some of the figures from the 20th up on my display cabinet behind me. And I do want to get another one, especially if I end up getting more of the 25 years anniversary minifigures. I think displaying them side by side would look pretty, pretty cool. As of the 20th, I think we got five sets and a poly bag. We got Luke, Leia, Han, Lando and Vader in a set. And then we got the Obi-Wan Kenobi poly bag, which was a gift we purchased for spending so much at various retail stores. And I'm not quite sure if that was also on lego.com, but it probably was at some point. And if I'm being completely honest, I actually do quite like the way that Lego have done this year, giving us the minifigures that they might not have put in a set anytime soon, but they know that the community would love to get their hands on. I guess the Kenobi sets were popular enough that they could add someone like Young Leia to the mix. And it's a little disappointing that someone like Saw Gerrera that's in so much material. He's been in and I'm not going to list off the shows just like the Fortress Inquisitorious because I know many of you might not have watched everything yet. There is a lot of material to cover and he's in pretty much half of it. And he'll probably show up in Andor Season 2 as well because I assume there'll be some sort of tie between some of the characters, especially building up to Rogue One. I expect to see a bunch of people and hopefully we can get a Galen Erso minifigure which I still can't believe they didn't give us. They gave us every other minifigure from that show that had some importance and not Galen Erso, who I would argue had one of the most important stories in the movie, at least leading up to the original trilogy. Actually, the more you think about it, the more important everyone was to the rest of the Star Wars story. Someone like Saw should have come in a set. Cal, I would have loved in a set, but they've only given us the BD-1 
They could have put Cal in with BD1. It doesn't really fit with the rest of the buildable characters. So Cal makes perfect sense. Fives, yeah, makes perfect sense. They have no reason to put him in a set. Yeah, I'd love to still get one with some more named clone troopers. As I said, this does open up for... Fives is way over there. I don't know what I'm pointing at. It does open up for a rookies battle pack and they can exclude fives and give us an echo printed torso. But check out my Clone Wars custom set video for more information on that. Now, I realize I've been talking for quite some time, so I'm going to get my figures down, look at that, and then I'll talk a bit more afterwards. As I said, I did give fives this custom hair piece which I think is the same one off of Goliath from the Marvel Season 2 CMF. But the minifigures we got for the 20th were based on classic Lego minifigures, and they've almost done the opposite. And I know a load of Lego fans would have loved to have seen perhaps a more prequel orientated, especially with 25 years of Phantom Menace, they could have given us some Phantom Menace yellow figures. like. Qui-Gon, Kenobi, perhaps an Anakin, we could also have a Padme. The Darth Maul that we got in the dictionary could have been given out in one of the sets, but I would rather have a few minifigures that they wouldn't do, and perhaps a promotional minifigure, just like the Luke at the back there that was similar to the Darth Maul. I think Luke was given out in one of the dictionaries or something like that, and Luke doesn't have any special printing on the back compared to the rest of the minifigures, which all have 20 years of Lego Star Wars. I'm very happy they didn't do that for 25 years. Could you imagine if we got a Fives minifigure and on the back it said 25 years of Lego Star Wars and just meant you could only display him from the front. But as I said, I have given him a custom hairpiece. He looks much better without it. And really, it's not that hard to give us these two round one by ones on the display and enable us to display the helmet side by side. I mean, they connect at the side and much like the 20 years, they are four by six displays. This isn't taking up any extra room and you could probably clip the other displays over the top still and save just a bit of room on your display. You can see I only actually have three of these minifigures. I have the Kenobi from the Polybag, the Leia and the Luke from the two sets. Fun story about Luke, you might already have heard this if you've been on the channel a while, but Luke come from the only set to have parents and a child in Anakin's pod racer. We will take a look at that set in a second. And that came with Luke Skywalker with both of his parents, Anakin and Padme, of course, earlier on in their character arcs, but I think that's a really cool fact that not many people realize about the set. And actually, it was my favorite set from the 20th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars Wave. I think the set that, well, Kenobi come in a poly bag. I think Leia came in the Slave One. That was an awesome set as well. Han came in a Stormtrooper dropship. We've got Vader in a Kashyyyk sort of battle pack style. I feel like the Kashyyyk battle pack, if it was re-released next year, would be a £25 battle pack, perhaps a few more droids, and that was quite a decent set. And then Lando came... I can't remember when Lando came in. I have no idea what set that was, so I'll put that on screen for you. But I'm trying to piece together them minifigures off of Bricklink. I have the Han torso and the Vader face, and I think I also have... It might be Darth Vader's plaque as well in great condition. So as soon as I'm placing my next few orders for a whole number of upcoming videos I've got planned, I'll be keeping my eye out for them parts because they're actually quite cheap to part out, especially the torsos because of that back printing. I feel like that's not going to be the case with these characters, especially Darth Malak. So many people wanted that Darth Revan poly bag and the price of that has gone so high. I think people are paying crazy numbers for a Lego Darth Revan, especially when there are some custom printed ones out there that only cost 20, 30 pound and honestly look a bit better than Lego's older printing. But I think Darth Malak is gonna be a similar minifigure. Coming in a 90 pound set, I'd love to get my hands on an R2D2. And with the new droid one, I feel like it's gonna be around the same price range. So you might as well be going for the slightly bigger R2D2, the medium. Lego buildable R2-D2. Three on the shelf is way too on the shelf is too many R2-D2s. Three, 
at least it's not as many as the Falcons about to be. UCS, MIDI, Rise of Skywalker and Rebuild the Galaxy 4 is quite a lot and it's a bit surprising that Rebuild the Galaxy hasn't tied in a bit more with the 25th anniversary of LEGO because LEGO have come out and said that the figures we're getting, Fives, Malak, are figures that they can't put out in a set and then they go and announce a show that is completely different to the Star Wars universe where every one of these minifigures would have fit in. Perhaps Five survived, perhaps Malak was from a different time, they could do some whole time portal thing, a bit similar to Rey from the Christmas special. And it's very interesting. I would love to know the process that LEGO have gone through to get all of these characters. Of course, Fives is a fan favorite clone. Loads of people wanted a Saw Gerrera minifigure. Loads of people built a very good custom using a head they gave us in a half sort of blister pack, a minifigure bonus pack, which reminds me of the ones that used to be given out at Legoland. And it is a shame we never got any Star Wars ones. This is the Star Wars version, and I wasn't able to pick them up, but the headpiece used on one of the Hoth Troopers was perfect for a custom sort Guerrera. And we've got Young Leia from Kenobi, not too hard to make a custom of, but it's really nice that we've got a minifigure, especially R2KT. It's great that we get another droid with some printing. And then we've got Cal Kestis from a game, that's fair enough. I mean, we've already got Ray alone in a TIE Bomber. We've got, who's the other? Iden Versio in a battle pack. I would have loved to have seen a Fallen Order Jedi Survivor game. Even if it was just a diorama, cow, buildable creature, purge trooper, there are so many characters we won't be getting from Fallen Order because they've already given us cow. They've crossed cow off their list and now we're not getting a purge trooper. We're not getting any official Lego Inquisitors. So I guess that's something that I'll eventually have to turn to customs. And these minifigures aren't working out. Well, they're free with sets. They don't cost anything more than the set you are paying for. Customs are costing a lot of money recently, 20, 30 quid. And it is a shame we won't be getting many of these in sets. But speaking of sets, I've gone on another tangent. Let's compare my favorite sets from both of the anniversaries. In getting down Anakin's pod racer, I realized it's technically the only set from the 20th I still have built because if we were to take a look at the slave one or boba's fire spray i have actually turned it into django fett slave one up there and it's not a great mock it's something that i did kind of just whack together sometime last year when i was trying to first organize my display and i never really showed it off in a video so perhaps that's a future video in the making if i can get it look into a decent standard but anakin's pod racer is one to 45 scale exactly it is a perfect one to 45 scale and i think that's why i like it so much this inspired me to start my minifigure scale well i guess this chose the scale for me because i realized based off this it was the exact same scale as a minifigure's height to most of the characters in show especially now that we've got them three quarter legs these legs are five plates tall they're three plates tall so i guess 60 percent legs and then the shorter legs are two plates tall which are 40 percent legs perhaps we need a middle of these two we need a four plate leg but i don't really know if that's going to be something that lego look at doing anytime soon it might diminish the look of a classic lego minifigure though for slightly shorter characters that aren't quite the 180 centimeters that might be something that lego might want to look at doing now the tentive boarding playset i've turned into a tentive boarding diorama and you can see we do have fives here as well and i have added a load more troopers and rebels i think the set came with two rebels two troopers vader and antilles but I've still kept the best parts of the set, like the door that does slide open and shut and actually added a second one, which is another piece I'll need to look out for. But I think both of these are great for different reasons. Anakin's Pod Racer was a great scout and I really like the general build. It looks like it is taken straight from the Phantom Menace. And that's something that I really liked for 20 years of Phantom Menace this year. 
We've got a diorama of the pod racers. We've got Mulsif Infiltrator, which I guess is the modern day equivalent to this. Slightly smaller, doesn't look as good, but I feel like we've, we're have we missing out on some really cool Lego Star Wars Phantom Menace sets. I think a year before this, we got a duel of the phase. And so far this year, we've got the two sets. I'm trying to think what else they've done for Phantom Menace this year. We've obviously got the diorama of the pod racers, Mulsif Infiltrator. We got the poly bag, the AAT that was available in January. And I think that might have come back for May the 4th. We then have Maul in the dictionary, the exclusive minifigure. And I think that's it. And for people that aren't a fan of Lego Star Wars in general, personally, dioramas aren't for me. I don't think I have bought a single one of the dioramas. I like the look of them. I like turning cheaper sets into them. But for 60 to 90 to I don't want to know how expensive they're going to get in the future, they're just a bit pricey for what you're actually getting. If you can turn a 40, 50 pound set into a diorama yourself, and I think the bricks probably cost you a maximum of 10 pound on top of the set. So that's still getting towards the 60 pound mark. But you're getting seven minifigures of which you're getting Antilles, two rebel troops. They are very wanted minifigures for a lot of people compared to dioramas that come with at most like three minifigures. If they packed them a bit more like my Moss Eisley diorama, perhaps a look back at the Master Builders Ewok Village would be amazing and they just include a bunch of minifigures on a diorama. That's definitely worth the £90 you're paying for. But it's definitely clear that LEGO have, or I guess they make the most money off the original trilogy. That would be the only reason they're making so many sets based off it. And at least we're getting prequel sets. I know sequel trilogy fans haven't had a set for, well, you've got the Falcon that's still on shelves, but that come out, it must have been nearly five years ago now. That's the Rise of Skywalker come out in, I'm pretty sure it was like 2019. So the set must be nearing its retirement, especially with the Dark Falcon. But there's some great figures on both. I like the fact we got Padme with the Pod Racer because we really needed another Padme. We don't have enough Padmes. And even though we didn't get Leia with the Tantiv, I don't think you can get a New Hope Leia, which I guess would have been nice, but I'm happy we got Antilles instead of Leia, especially with her recently being available on the X-Wing playset. Hopefully you can't hear all the noise going on outside. I'll try and make this outro a bit brief. I don't think either anniversary compares to the other. I mean, the 20 years was definitely focused on the origin of Lego. And I guess we did get that one Phantom Menace set. Did we get any others? I don't think we did get any other Phantom Menace sets. So I guess they're improving this year. We've got two sets maybe for the 30th anniversary. We'll get three sets and it'll continue like that. I mean, last year was the 45th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. When we get to them years, we definitely want to be expecting more of these sets. Next year's gonna be crazy. I'm expecting to see purely Empire Strikes Back, Return of Revenge of the Sith even, and Clone Wars, Force Awakens. There was something else that's celebrating an anniversary next year and I can't remember what it is. It's probably one of the games, or perhaps it's The Mandalorian. Is that celebrating its five years already? I think that's even older than that. I think it's five years for us in the UK, but it came out the Christmas for the US. So it's actually turning five this year. Who knows, we might see a set come January to celebrate its anniversary, and that would be included in next year. But so far, there's nothing wrong with the 25th anniversary. There's nothing too special that you need to spend all your money on the figures. It's really catering to very different audiences. Fives is Clone Wars fans. Leia is Kenobi fans. R2K is collectors. So there's a little bit for everyone. And I quite like that rather than getting a bunch of old original trilogy figures from A New Hope. So let me know what you think of the Lego anniversary so far down in the comments. And also let me know what you thought of the 20th in comparison. I'd love to hear what you have to say, but that is all for me today. Don't forget to like the video on your way out and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. May the bricks be with you always.